What if I told you that you weren't using 100% of Suno? I'm gonna show you how I use Suno as somebody who's released over 300 songs, mixed, mastered, and produced all by me, and all the nuances that this technology has allowed us to do. I'm gonna start by going to Suno because I have this beat I made. It's very funky and I like it. So I'm gonna start by downloading just the WAV file and I'm gonna click the three dots here to get the stems and the MIDI. And I'm gonna get all detected stems. All them <clears throat> I'm just gonna click download all so we get them all in a nice little zipped package. For the time being, I'm gonna leave Suno and we're gonna go into FL Studio, but these tips will apply no matter which DAW you're using. Let's drag in these stems. Now, Suno isn't always the best with keeping things on the grid. So, I'm going to play the metronome and make sure that everything is on time. It pretty much is, but it's just like a beat off. Get it? Shut up. Okay, this isn't perfect, but it's close enough. And now I'm just going to record a quick verse. If I get the feeling of killing, I ain't waiting. So my room is not treated, so FL Studio has this thing where you can de-reverb, but there's a bunch of different AI things you can use for that as well. I'm just going to use FL Studios for time saving purposes. Now I'm just going to do a little bit of compression to the vocals. I'm not going to go deep into that topic. I do have a whole video on that though that I'll put up in a card if you want to see more about how to mix vocals. I'm not crazy, I'm just sad The way to my heart ain't around the bend I'm gonna export this little section with my vocals and then bring it back into Suno. And we're going to upload audio. Just gonna grab that song, save, and just save it to library. All right, now I'm just gonna click these three dots and go to remake slash edit, and we're gonna open it in studio because there's a lot of cool things we can do with this and add to this. Okay, now that we've got our song in here, I'm going to duplicate this track. And I just want to get an extra set of vocals. So I'm going to change this from song to vocals and put rock, male, singer, lead, raspy. And then I have the lyrics from the song. Then we're going to click replace. What I'm trying to do is get Suno to make background vocals for me. So I don't have to record a bunch of vocals in the background and we can just have harmonies and all of that. And even though the singer will sound a little different than me, because it's all background stuff, it's not really going to matter. And it might actually sound better that way. If I get the feeling of killing, I ain't waiting. Hey, pretty mama, would you mind if I'm waiting? So you can see it's like offbeat, but that's fine because we're going to download that directly into our project and then we can fix that up. So now I'm going to duplicate these vocals and I'm just going to do the same thing, except I'll change the prompt a little bit. I'll just put male, raspy, rock vocals, chorus, effects, classic rock. Maybe it gets like a little bit more rock and then we'll hit replace again. If I get the feeling of killing, I ain't waiting. So now I'm going to du <laughs> duplicate. So now I'm gonna duplicate this vocal track again because now I wanna get some like gospel female background vocals whenever it does the little closer to the middle play the fiddle like a Quinn. So we're just gonna find that spot. I'm just gonna mute this so we don't have an aneurysm. We'll keep it on regular vocals because whenever you do backing vocals, it tends to do a lot of chords and like oohs and ahs. And we just need to keep the little closer to the middle play the fiddle like a Quinn part. And I'm just gonna put gospel, soulful, female, harmonies well I don't know why I did that but it's kind of nice so I guess what we really need to do is do the entire vocal that's probably the only way it'll work and then you can just cut it off so let's try that again with vocals oh shit oh shit if I get the feeling of killing I ain't waiting all right, so now let's just add some like electric guitar flourishes or something like that to go in between these spots because it gets a little bit boring like right here in between the vocals. So I'm thinking just like a something just to give it a little bit of soul. So we're just gonna select that part, open this up and get rid of the lyrics and let's choose guitar. Electric guitar, classic rock, solo, flourishes and slides. Just something like that. And I'm gonna keep all of this the same because I don't wanna fuck with it too much, you know? All right, let's hear what we got.
All right, now I'm gonna go to export and multi-track. So we can get all of these downloaded and we can bring them back inside of the DAW. All right, so let's hear all these vocal takes by themselves. If I get the feeling of killing, I ain't waiting. Then we've got this voice. If I get the feeling of killing, I ain't waiting. Okay, so we'll call this one dub and we'll call this one a harmony because it's a little bit different. And then this is the gospel female, I think. Ah! If I get the feeling of killing, I ain't waiting. Oh, that's nice. But we're going to leave her part for over here, except for that first part, because that's nice. Ah! So I'm going to bring this dub into a mixer track, and I'm going to do what's called the Haas Effect using Stereo Enhancer by FL Studio. Uh, you can do this with delays or whatever type of doubler you have in your doll of choice. And I'm just going to EQ this a bit to take out some of the high end and some of the low lows. See, in the background, it kind of sounds like my voice, especially once you add all the instruments in. Now we can take that harmony, do the same thing. And I'm going to filter this one out just a bit more because it's different and it's a harmony and I want it to be even more in the background. I didn't change outfits, you did. So let's get this little uh, gospel sounding thing. And it's got a little click when it comes in, so I'm just gonna get rid of that. I'm going to do what's called a low pass filter because it has some gross little high end stuff. It's like an AI artifact. So we're gonna get rid of that and let's bring everything else in so I can hear it in context. And I'm also going to add some reverb to it to push it into the background a bit. Alright, and now we've got this little guitar that we generated to come in between the vocal spots. But, I don't want it to be doing all of that, so I'm going to cut out some of it. Kind of just like this part. So. Killing and killing, I ain't waiting. And like the world is your oyster. If you want to, you can start this guitar part back here. As long as it's on the grid, it works. Killing, I ain't waiting. And I'm also gonna pan this to the left. So that way it's only coming through in the left ear since this is like a classic rock sounding song. That'll make it sound nice and give it like an old school vibe. Ain't waiting. And I'm also going to cut out these little things. And the second time it comes around, we can have it in the right ear. But whichever doll you're using, you can automate this. So I'm going to automate it where the first time it's in the left ear, the second time it's in the right ear. Yeah, I like that shit. All right, now let's analyze some of these stems and see what's going on. Because we got some weird sounds happening that I don't like. Like, it has a synth layer. Do we need a synth, though? Yeah, it doesn't sound necessary. I'm just gonna delete it. It's gonna cause more harm than good. Now let's EQ this guitar a little bit. Once again, we're gonna get out the super high end because that's where a lot of the AI artifacts are. And I'm gonna get rid of like the super low end as well because with those artifacts, sometimes it causes like a click and you can really feel that in the sub area. Uh, let's see what this other is. Yeah, it sounds like a sleigh bell or something. We definitely don't need that. All right, and let's see how our drums are sounding. See, these are actually sounding better than the drums usually sound. Usually that's what I have the most trouble with, but these are these came together pretty good. Now, I'm not going to do much of these drums. I'm just going to get rid of some of the mids. And let's add a little bit of compression to it also. So for the bass, I'm just going to take out the low, low end, like around 20 hertz. And we're going to add a little bit of compression on that too. 
And let's do a little bit of a noise gate on this mother. And what the noise gate is going to do is just tighten it up a little bit so that whenever it gets pretty quiet where you can't hear it anyways, it's just going to take out that fuzz. <laughs> Uh, and let's also take this guitar that comes in every now and then. We're just going to low pass it and high pass it. So that way it sounds a little bit more tucked in the background. So we're pretty much done. But before I play the full thing, I have a bunch of videos on this channel that go deeper into the concepts of mixing and stuff like that. So check those out if you're just getting into producing because of Suno. And let me know in the comments if there's anything else you want to see because this is a new world and I don't know what to do sometimes. And here's the song we made. Mm -hmm.